Hello guys, welcome back to PD Music Studios tutorial series. On this episode I'm going to be looking at how to build a trans groove. So kick drum, open that, close that clap and um, some drum loops in there as well that we'll do some edits on to make them unique. Um, I've got Cubase 10 up and running um, so without further ado we'll get started. So I've already loaded a battery channel in there. Battery is the sampler that I'm going to be using today. This is it here, we've got our cells here, and your library uh, appears on the left hand side here. I've got this selected in a fairly old sample pack, it's a Vengeance Club Sound 4 sample pack. Um, that's to make sure that if MDs want to copy this video at home, then they've got the same samples that I'm just about to use. Because it's a fairly old one and I believe that most producers will have it at this point. So all I'm going to do is click on it, to select one, and then control A and that selects all for me. I'm going to grab the first one and drag it over into that first cell which corresponds to note C1 on my keyboard. Right, so you can see the waveform for the first one that's selected there and all the other parameters have been now became active. So we've got tuning over here, pan controls, velocity, volume envelopes, pitch envelopes, things like that. I'm going to keep it really simple today. I'm just going to make sure that my velocity is up, which it is, and then I'm going to close the instrument. I've got my locator set up here on the first bar. When you open Cubase, it looks pretty much like that. So you just grab the little triangles, or you, or you go up and it turns to the pointer tool, or the draw tool, sorry, and you drag out. Once you've got your bar set out, and when it's lit up like that, it means it's in loop mode. So if I take the loop off, you can see it's went out. So it means it's just going to play through it. So if I play it, you can see it plays through. If I put the loop back on you can see that now it's going to stay in that section all day long. Right, so I'm just going to double click between those locators, so in this grey area here, to create an event. So once you've got your event or box, double click in. To make this full screen on Cubase 10, you would just click this arrow on the right here, and that opens in a separate window for you. Now I said that first note corresponds to note C1, that first cell. So there it's there. All the other keys are different bass drums to give me options. So all I'm going to do is take my draw tool, come down and make that four little boxes, four sixteenths or one beat in length. After I've done that, I can use a keyboard shortcut, Control D, which copy and paste to the end of the part. I know we're in loop mode. If I now play. You can hear that kick drum playing away there. So we can do this in real time when it's playing. I can start to move up through the different drum sounds. So we'll play it and we'll run through a few. Right, we'll go with that one just now, and we'll come back to the main page, we can use the X here, and to close this editor there's an X here as well, so catch you later. Once you've got your kick drum, you double click, you type in your track name, if you hold down Alt and hit Return, it will name your box here as well. And there we go. File, save as.
There we go. Once you do your first initial save, your auto save kicks in. So although I'll keep telling you to save it anyway, it's better to have the auto save function on because if you don't save it, it doesn't go on. So you need to do that first initial save first. Right, so I use samples for two reasons. Um, the flexibility. You saw what I did there. I went into it and I started moving up through the notes to get different um, drum sounds, you know, to kick drum sounds. Also, when you bring that into an audio channel like that, you're bringing one at a time. So if you don't get it like it first time, you, you bin it and you bring a new one in. So it saves a little bit of time just moving into the box and moving to the next drum rather than going and importing a new one kind of thing. Also, when you place two kick drums side by side or any piece of audio side by side, the next piece of audio overwrites the other one. So when a snare drum or a bass drum plays, you it it doesn't stop in, in a natural acoustic environment it doesn't stop when the next one, next one starts on an audio track that's what's happening with midi and sampling like i've just done the sampler plays the full drum so like it would in nature you know um so yeah that's why i use samples so next channel in is again going to be another battery this time i'm going to go and get some other samples so I'm looking at open hats this time. And again, control A, grab them, drag them. You can see the sample. Oh, I've only got one there. I'm going to control A again, and then copy the rest in like that. There we go. Again, just double check the velocity, which it is. Create the event, and go into the event. Full screen. Right, so, we went to C1 first there. Now the bass drum goes on the beat. The open hat goes on what's called the off beat. So it would be 1.3, 2.3, 3.3, 4.3 .3 in there. Um, let's do this and I'll show you what I mean. Just solo this, this editor out. So you can hear the open hat there. I can again go up through them with the arrows. And I can do it in with the kick as well. So, um, come back to there, again, just tag a channel. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. So, a new battery. Come back. Control A to select all, grab it, drag it over. Velocity is good. Maybe be interesting to point out as well, if I actually name the channel now, then it'll save me having to name the box as well. So if I just do that, it's 
done for me. Right, so... So, I've entered in the first beat of notes there. Um, you base your closed hats on um, a drummer sitting at his drum kit. So, when his foot's on the pedal and the two hats are closed together, you get the closed hat sound. When his foot's up and the two hats are open, you get the open hat sound. You can't make both sounds at the same time because his foot's either up or down. So, we kind of keep the same principles. So, the space that I've left is where the open hat plays on every beat. So, if I take that and control D it now, you can see that that space there is where that open hat is going to be playing. Let's play it. I'm not going to spend too much time looking for one because I spent loads of time on the last one, so we'll go with this one. Um, nothing sounding great at the moment because we've not looked at levels. We'll get the parts in, then we'll do that. So again, the X there takes us back to the main page, and for the last time, another battery. Come back. This time we're looking for clap sounds. Control A. Grab them, drag them. There we go, velocities are good. I'll just tag it just now. And again, full screen. Now, this time, depending on what style of music you write as well, but for this trance one, I'm going to be doing beat two and beat four, which is very, very common. But if you're writing harder styles of music, like hardcore, uh, GABA, sometimes they go on the beat kind of thing to match the kick drum. Um, it's just worth noting things like that. So I've put it beat 2, beat 4. I can select all again. Let's hear what it's doing first. Let's move them up. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. Let's have a listen in the mix. Yep, again, that'll work. There's loads in here, though. Right, so I'm just doing this for quickness now, because I spent too long in the other one. Um, close that off. Close that off. I like to colour code my drums, so if I select... I did an extra version there. Uh, if I select... Holding down control, I can select, select each channel. Like that. Go up to the colour chart and just tag them all red. Save. Right, so, we're going to bring the mixer up. It's here, and we're going to kill all the levels. And the reason for that, if you look at the stereo out here, you can see it's already clipping out. You can't have that starting. You know, that's not a great start. So, We'll take the kick drum just up a wee bit and we'll play it. And we'll bring in the open. And we'll bring in the closed. And then the clap. bit of equalization on these Pro Q2 is my go to equalizer. It's a parametric EQ. There you go, you can see the kick spe spectrum analyzer of the kick down there. So I'm going to take a band in so you can hear the bass coming in and out there. So we're looking for a wee sweet spot. Quite like 62 hertz because every speaker that you buy will be able to reproduce that frequency. Get away, you.
Okay, so I've done a little bit too much. It's clipping out a wee bit there, but we'll, we'll fix that in a minute. I've done two frequency ranges there, the low and the little click sound on the high, just to add a little bit of definition. It helps with clarity in the mix as well. But we'll get a look at the uh, input to it now. So I reduced the output of this plugin by 6 decibels. That's just, just just to keep the clip lights off and everything nice and clean. Yes, it did drop the level of the kick drum, but I've still got plenty of headroom on my channel, so I've boosted it up again there. I'm going to leave that one as is. Open hat. So this time we're going to remove any unwanted frequencies first. And 96 dB for up to slope. And I'm just going to move it on until I hear the hats change. And then back off. Because I don't want to change the sound of the hat, I just want to clean it up. And this is what I'm removing from it. I'm now going to brighten up with a high shelving. And again, just get a real look at that level there. Now the closed hat, like I mentioned earlier, are supposed to be coming, closed and open supposed to be coming from the same source. So if we click on the open hat, I wonder if this little bug has been fixed yet. F3, can I now switch channels? No. Come on Steinberg, I've updated Cubase today. This is now running Cubase 10.20. Um, and I still can't select different channels on the mixer like I used to be able to in Cubase 7.5, Cubase 7, Cubase 5, Cubase 3 and the original one that we started doing this job with god 20 odd years ago. Um, you would think after three updates and the amount of money that the studio spent with your products that you would get your um, products right for your customers. Um, so Cubase please can be get the facility to select these channels from the mixer back. So now what I need to do is go back out, click on the open hat, which it already is, go back in, click on the mixer to make sure this white border appears so the mixer is active, control C, and instead of just being able to click on the next channel, I now need to come back out, click on the next channel, F3, Go back in and do control V to copy and paste the settings from the open hat to the closed hat. Ridiculous. I just want to be able to select each channel like I used to be able to. Anyway, we're going to play it. Right, so the closed hat is only designed to add pace, it shouldn't be allowed. Um, so you, you saw what I've done there, I've dropped that back. Um, with the wheel of the mouse hovering over the fader, you can move them up very small increments. It's a fifth of a decibel every notch on the wheel of my mouse there. It's amazing how much of a difference that makes. Close the mix.
Alexa and we'll save the project. I don't want to make this video too long today so I'll do two more drum loops file um, actually we'll add a couple of channels first audio track and I want two please and there we go so audio one file import audio file this time now navigate through my samples that's the wrong drive Right, so loops 140. Um, hi hat percussion, lo fi beats, shuffle loops. Um, break beats, I'm not sure. Let's go in here and just one at a time. Go down to. Now I've already got open, closed hat, clap, drum, uh, kick drum in there. So I'm going to be looking for things that are different. Right, I'm going to open that couple of elements in there that's pretty decent. Right, so I've created my own box there first, drag that in and then glue it on. If you don't, you go into an editor that lets you do audio warping and vary audio hit points, things like that. When you glue it into the other box, can I be glue? you go into this editor here and that lets me cut up this loop with the scissors so I'm going to play this on its own so you can hear the timing's not there If I press F2, you can see that I've set my sequencer to 136 for this project. These loops are 140. That's why the timing's out. Up underneath your object selection tool is a little arrow. Normal sizing. Sizing moves content. Or sizing applies time stretch. All you need to do is grab the corner and drag it to the 3. And that will adjust the timing for you. Once you're done, go back to normal sizing. Now, I said earlier that I've got open hat, closed hat, clap in my track already. In this loop, you can clearly hear those elements. Well, the hats anyway, not so much the clap. But there's elements in here that I want and some that I don't. So, I'm going to make sure that I'm on use quantize and I'm going to make sure that I'm on a 16. That lets me cut 16 spaces per bar. I'm going to eliminate some of these elements. take my mute tool and take out the one that I don't need back to my scissors I don't need that I'm fairly sure it's just these bigger transients that I'm looking at so I'm going to just go ahead and cut out the bits that I don't think I need take my mute tool, play it through Right, so I've selected the elements I want to keep. I'm going to take out the elements that I don't want. And that gives me room to create a new loop from these elements. So these are sitting on the offbeats, those ones. Let's drag this lot back. In fact, let's keep them there. They're new, actually. Let's put that there. Grab those three again. Move those there. And put that there. Let's see how that sounds. Let's run that again.
<laughs> the only thing that's throwing me a little bit is that there. That's a bass drum, and it's going to be triggering just before um, our track bass drum. Um, but I'm going to bring it into the mix and see how it sounds. drawing the end of that and as it's just the same playing the same part there so i can just do that and when it gets copied back out again and i'm just like this it's just going to be playing the same part anyway um right so that is loop one and i think i've made this video long enough um so um with that you saw that I pulled in an extra audio channel there. You could maybe do two, three, maybe four different loops. They don't need to be full on like that either. Um, and what I mean by that is if you only decide to use one component from the drum loop that you've got and place it somewhere in within your mix area, or sorry, that bar area, once or twice, doesn't matter. It's not about how much of the loop or how little of the loop that you use, it's about how creative you can be with any part of the loop. Um, like I said, those Vengeance packs, everybody's probably got them, so it, it makes sense to be able to take these things and edit them and um, make them something unique, make them into your own thing. So start practicing that. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll get another wee tutorial video up very, very soon. Thanks again.